You know, all together, well, hard to tell in the light, but I feel like I accomplished a pretty natural look. Uh, not a no makeup makeup look, but I feel like it's very wearable on a daily basis. Guys, today I'm doing another best of 2022, but not me. These are the favorites of Michelle Wong. Michelle Wong is one of my favorite beauty YouTubers. She probably is yours too, according to Google Analytics. A lot of my viewers watch her. And I've been watching her since she had 10,000, before 10,000, because I remember watching that video where she said, oh wow, 10,000. That's how long, before I even had an account on YouTube. You know that you can actually watch videos without having an account. So the other day I did the same thing with Alana Davidson's favorites from 2022. Alana is 30, but her skin is dry. My skin is dry. And we are about the same color. I think that she is a little bit lighter than me. But she has a you know big variety because she does like to self-tan. Michelle is about 10 years younger than me, and I think she's also lighter than me. She just has a different camera setting, so I always thought she was about the same, but I think she's actually lighter, and she also has dry skin. So when I was watching her video, and you know what? <sighs> I was so proud of myself. I'm prepped. I'm ready. I don't have my list. My list I forgot to bring in this room, but I'll break away later and get it. When I was watching her video, I thought, okay, I have that, mm hmm oh, I have that too, right, right, okay, and I have that, and you know what, I don't have that, and this is a good excuse for me to get it, and I can put it all on my face and, and see what my thoughts are. A lot of these things I got a couple of days ago, like a week ago, because I didn't buy everything from one place, it was kind of trickle in, so some of these I've already tried, and tried to work with, just like with the Alana video. By the way, you guys, I got many comments saying I love this concept on that video, and I was wondering what part of the concept, trying on another YouTuber's favorites from 2022, or trying on the makeup of someone who's half my age. Let me know down below which it is. And one more thing, I haven't said this in a long, long time. I'm on Instagram. I'm on the underscore hooded underscore lid, and I would love to see you there if you are also on Instagram. So let's start, and I'll talk as we go. Foundation. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Base. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Face Base. I have a little sample size. I was a big Bobbi Brown person ages ago when I was, you know, in my 20s and 30s. And I did have this. I didn't know it was a primer. I didn't know what a primer was. I thought, well, this is a nice moisturizer. I'm already moisturized and sunscreened, so this will be interesting. And I'm really not sure how to put this on. I'd be inclined, because it's so thick, to just kind of rub it between my hands and do that. Smells like a lemon cold dream. I do remember loving this smell. Okay, let's get into it. The Surat Dewdrops. Now, the Surat Dewdrop, when it first came out, I really didn't like it. Let's see if it's going to work for me. Yep. It doesn't have a lot of slip. So I, people were yelling at me, you're using too much, but I kind of had to because I couldn't stretch it over my face. But when it first came out, I really didn't like it. And then... I changed my sunscreen formulas, which were more kind of a um, watery gel situation. And when I changed that, and I used this again, I thought, well, this is totally working now. I really like it. It's barely anything on the face, <laughs> really. But it's also stretching really nicely with the face face. So I'm just going to do half my face so you can see what's going on. And that's pretty much it. It really looks like hardly anything the way I just applied it, right? My redness is toned down just a little, little bit. Now, right here, this is how you get it out. And if you have nails at all, it's weird. Or you can use your thumb 
but I can't really depress that well. It's, it's a strange operation. <laughs> and that's what it looks like. It's a little bit stiff. And the last one, I just accidentally plunged my thumbnail into it and it broke. Also, sometimes nothing comes out and people have said, oh, store it upside down and it'll be fine. I don't really like that idea, especially since it's a very strange component. But I have noticed if I just give it a shake, I don't have a problem. And Michelle has said that she prefers light coverage, and that is what you get with this. It's a lot of work for light coverage. <laughs> so you can see everything, you know, you can see my imperfections, little red spots, broken capillaries, the whole bit, but it does kind of offer a nice little something or other. I'm going to go into the hot and flashy because I and perpetually have a runny nose this time of year. I think it's allergies. So it's this is a great one to use for no makeup makeup day. It just evens everything out. Unfortunately, they don't have a lot of shades. They don't have a lot of shades, but this one is, you know, it's good enough for me. And this is shade four. Dewdrops from Surat. Now, she didn't mention this in the video, but it is well known that she loves the Dior Corrector. I think it's called the Skin Corrector. And I just got it. I want to do a little bit of a test swatch because my biggest issue is I think the color is quite yellow. So this is the 215 in the Tint Adol, which is right here. And this one is the 2N in the Dior. Now the Dior I've never had before, so I didn't know what color. I was hoping that it would correspond with your foundation because I'm 2N in their foundation. And I know that they do market this as something that you can use on your face as well as under your eyes. So I guess 2N would be, this would be good for on my face, a little bit better than on my eyes. I'm picking it up with Hot and Flashy. And I just kind of feel this color doesn't work for me. It's too warm. Although this foundation's a little warm on me too. So with this foundation, it actually might be great. I may as well put some on my lid. And now I'm going to pick up the rest with Beauty Blender and see what that's about. Because I didn't do that in the other video and I haven't done it with this product yet. If you've been here before, you know I have a hard time judging concealer if the color is bad because it just throws me for a loop. Okay, I like it with the Beauty Blender. I think maybe better than with the brush. So I'm just going to pounce this out and get it a little bit smoother. Okay, so far so good. I'm not going to powder yet. I don't like to put powder on wet skin. I want everything to set up before I powder. So I usually go on with eyes. And for eyes, another thing that I already have, the Natasha Denona Glam Palette she said was her favorite. I think it wasn't, this video might not have been of 2022, it might have been all time, because this definitely did not come out in 2022. I don't want to actually do a big complicated eye look. So I'm wearing tan and gray. There's my gray, another color block sweater, and then I have a gray t-shirt underneath, because I can kind of do anything with this that will go. And I just don't want to do anything particularly fussy. Lately, I've been doing palettes like this and taking one color and blending a lot and loving the result. But let's just go in. And that color is called Crease. So that's the palette where they told you what to do with each color instead of naming them. Something I saw some people get upset about. I don't want them to tell me what to do. But for me, I kind of appreciate it. Big palettes can be very um, overwhelming. And when you're first getting to know a palette, if you know, hey, this is your crease shade, why not? Put it in a crease. If you find that eh, you don't like it there, or once you get to know the palette, you can do whatever you want. But this color is called Blend, which is funny because I just blended everything out. But uh, maybe I'll just kind of put this on the lid-ish area.
This is called Center Eyelid, and um, yeah, I'm gonna, I don't know, do what. I feel like, honestly, this is great for me on a day-to-day -day basis. I think I'm gonna put it a little bit in her corner for a little, little brightening, and closer to the lash line for a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Okay, very, very simple, very, very easy, and I think that's one of the things I love about this palette. This is also one of my favorites, but I can't use the word favorite. It's against my religion. It's too hard for me to say something like that, but this is very, 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 very useful. It is neutral. It is not too cool, but you can go cool with it, but there's little pops of warmness, like this pink, and oftentimes pinks are considered cools. This is a gold. This brown is definitely on the warmer side. This is a cooler brown gray, a grayish, grayish. There's taupes in here. It just has a nice, subtle variety that kind of straddles neutral, neutral a little warm, neutral a little cool, and as such can work for a lot of different skin tones and a lot of different aesthetics. So you can do evening look, such a beautiful classic evening look with this kind of palette, but you can do day look too just as easily. So I agree with her on this one 100%. One I do not agree with her on is her powder choice. I've had this for years, way before I started watching her, way before, you know, any, any, I, I bought it because I was at one of the professional makeup stores here in Los Angeles. I think there's about four, and I can't remember the names of them because I woke up late this morning and I'm a little bit frazzled. But this is the Kogan Doe Natural Lighting Powder, and there's little bits of glitter in here. You kind of have to be outside to see it. I remember being shocked when I first like, oh, what? That doesn't make any sense. But she loves this. This is her favorite powder, one of her favorite powders. So um, I'm just going to pick some up with my Wayne Goss brush. And we're going to do a little bit of powdering. I'm going to take down the sheen. And those are the areas I prefer to powder. Actually, it looks really nice. Maybe it's a really good pairing with a Surat. So there we go. This is the Coke and Dough Powder, Natural Lighting Powder, and it comes in one color, and it does have a little bit of a tone to it. It is not a color-free powder. That could have also been one of the problems. So maybe it just has to be, for me, with the exact right foundation color. And again, little teeny and very sparse, but little pieces of glitter are in this. Very, very little. Very, very little, but worth mentioning. So, <laughs> the sun's not coming back. It was beautiful and glorious for just a few minutes, but I just checked. Not any sky at all. So I decided to do another white balance and change my lights a little bit. Hopefully it will be a little helpful. And I don't know what's wrong with me. It's actually quite cold outside and this door is open and I'm hot so I took off my sweater how completely strange I also got my list from the living room so now I am powdered let's go on with some other face products and we'll go back to eyes for bronzer she said she loves Bobbi Brown and I have a Bobbi Brown this I believe was a limited edition but the colors themselves are not so this is Golden Light and Antigua, and honestly, I don't know which color is which. This would seem like it must be Golden Light. I, I do not know. I wore this a lot when I got it, and they come out with a different iteration of this every year, which is why I don't repurchase it. Um, but truly, I have no idea. I think Antigua was the color that she really liked, but I'm not sure which color it is. I'm just going to mix them together. So I'm just going to do a little kissing and now I'll just go over with the more bronzy color Bobby Brown was really known for her bronzers back in the day 
to bring a little bit of life to your face, to you look a little less dead, but not for that high untanned look. Except maybe in the summer. Let's go back to the eyes. I have the weirdest <laughs> eyes. All my life, my eyelashes either went straight out or down, I swear, and now they go up, which is strange. It's something that happened maybe in the last 10 or 15 years. However, now you can see my lid right through here, and I cannot stand it. I feel like, I'm, you know, maybe in real life it doesn't matter, but when I take pictures for my thumbnails, I feel like I look like I'm crazy, like I'm doing this, and I'm not. I feel like a, a Ramona. Remember that? <laughs> I have to have something right up here. This is from Hourglass. It's Michelle's favorite and it's my favorite because it does not move. I have the color Cave. And before this, I used something from Milk that did not move and they discontinued it. The eyebrow gel from Tom Ford, she has gone on about four years. Now, here's where we different. A lot of it has to do with aesthetics. And a lot of it has to do with what we are working with. What I'm working with is I want more right here. I prefer to pencil in. I don't necessarily want something like this on. It can work for me, but I have to be careful about it because it could get too much because I do have some really long, <laughs> weird, <laughs> you know, your great uncle kind of eyebrow hairs. And I find that if I cut them, they'll just go straight out. They cannot be tamed. So, you know, I keep them long, but I need to maintain them a little bit. And I don't want fiber gels on them. Unfortunately, they didn't have all the colors. So this color, I know, is a no-go for me. It's a little too dark. And I think this is the same color she uses. It's espresso. So uh, let's give it a go. When I do products like this, I like to pull this way first. And now that I'm using that brow gel, the new brow, I have a lot of little teeny, teeny hairs that you can't see because they're really thin. But if I'm super careful, I can try to engage those little hairs without getting a blob on my skin. And now I'm just going to go down. I don't mind it. I don't mind it, but the color is too dark for me. See, right here I got it like a gloop, which is going to be hard. Another thing I like about these kinds of products is I have some gray in this eyebrow and some blonde. I don't anymore because I just went over it. But I have to be careful with these wild ass, really long and frightening. Before I comb that down, I'm just looking for these teeny weeny new hairs that I can hopefully attach to. And then, now see how this is just still going out? Look at that. I don't want a laminated look, but it's just, it's a little bit hard for me. And now I have this glop thing that I think what I'm going to do is go in with my NYX and take that spoolie and see if I can get rid of this glop. Um, no, but I managed to make it look different. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure about that product, but I'm 100% sure that this color is a little too dark for me. I'm just not sure if I'm going to return it and get another color or just return it and let it alone. If you use this, let me know. Is there a learning curve that I am just, I'm just not getting? Mascara. Again, this is about aesthetic and this is about what we have. I think our lashes are very different. Her lashes go straight. And she said that she loves the Wayne Goss Mascara. It's her favorite mascara. And she said it's the only mascara that she's used where it curls her lashes and stays curled. Now, I don't remember if she actually curls her lashes 
And what she means is I curl my lashes and put this on and my lashes don't fall down from the weight of mascara. Or if this actually curls her lashes, I'm not sure which. I have tried this a couple of times and I'm telling you the first day I thought this is just awful. It made me look like I had fewer lashes, but they were really long. <laughs> and I want to look like I have hundreds more fluttery, natural, soft looking lashes. That's the aesthetic that I want. Once in a while I go for a full, fat kind of a lash, but I never want a long lash where it looks like instead of a thousand lashes, it looks like I have 10 lashes. That's not a look I'm after, and that's what this did. But a lot of mascaras do take some time to mature like a fine wine and get into their sweet spot. This is also one of those plastic applicators which I don't hate them as much as I used to. I think they've changed them a lot. The first one I ever tried I think was from Benefit and I was like, <laughs> stop poking me in the eye. Um, this one looks a lot different and let's see what it looks like today. I have tried it a couple of times. I will say whether this is an aesthetic that you like or not, this is very hard to take off and I don't like that at all. That's why I love tubing mascaras. They come off so easily. All you need is warm water, you splash on your face, and the lashes are in the sink. Now things I have that are not tubing, I can take off with micellar water. And with this, I cannot. I actually have to go somewhere and find an actual eye makeup remover, which I hate because they give me that blurry vision. I'm going to pull you in so you can see what this looks like. It looks better today than it did the first time. The first time it was like, hi, I have five lashes. It's very, very lengthening, but it's not my thing. I will say, though, just take a look right here. I didn't curl my lashes, and it... It meant actually kind of, it feels like it lifted everything up in an odd way. So that's interesting, but it's a, it's a pretty look, much better than the first couple of times I used it, so today is much better. But if I think for me, the fact that it's such a struggle to take this off, I just, I don't like eye makeup removers. I know I'm weird. I know you're thinking that, and yes, I am. I'm not going to argue with you. That's just my aesthetic. So for that, and that was kind of a fail for me. We are getting close to the end. Blush. She has talked so much about this blush from Lancome. She also spoke about the Kira Weiss, but I have the Kira Weiss, and I have to say, uh, not my favorite. This, I think, is not the formula so much that she loves as the color, and it's called Mil Gleis. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but Mil, as I understand it, is honey in French. And this is one of those shapeshifter colors. It looks like one thing in the pan and another thing on your face. And I only tried it a couple of times and I still can't really wrap my head around what color is this? And it could be because of the weather. It's been so gray, but we're gonna give this a go. I'm just patting some into my hand so I don't overdo it. <laughs> Without, with. It does have a little bit of um, a sheen going on. And she has said, she feels when she puts this on, she doesn't need a highlighter. And I'd say that's true. The RMS is much, much more shiny, but it just gives a little je ne sais quoi and has kind of a natural look in this lighting at this time of day, at this time of year. I'm gonna hand swash this for you. So there it is on the finger. And I've already put a little bit on my hand and I'm just going to build it up a little bit. And see how I move, when I move around, it kind of just has a little bit of shape shifting. Sometimes it looks really dark and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I see warmth to this and sometimes I feel like it's a little bit rosewood. I think when the sun is out, it looks more warm. And when the sun isn't out, it looks more rosewood. It's very, very interesting. A real shapeshifter, I don't know what I am. <laughs> I don't know if I like you. Um, I think it's worth keeping just to have something like that in your wardrobe. But this is, it's 
really hard for me to wrap my head around what color it is. And the fact that it's called Honey Glaze tells me there's warm in here, but maybe it's the sheen part that's warm. It's very interesting. And then the new Clay de Poe highlighter. So I bought one last year for another video I did trying on um, things Michelle Wong made me buy. And I really, really love it. It's so subtle and beautiful. And naturally, they discontinued it and came out with something else. This packaging, insane. So I think the first one, the packaging was flat, but it had this look. This, you can actually feel these crevices. I could stare at this for hours. Look at that. In the camera, it might look silver, but it's gold. I mean, seriously, if I smoked weed, this would occupy me for days. She has the color Golden Galaxy, which looks like this. And this is also not flat, you guys. The crevices are in here as well. It had a lot of sparkles on it, which is one of the reasons I did not want to get this. The last time I bought something where someone said, well, the sparkles are just overspray, they weren't. It was a Charlotte Tilbury product. And also, this is much more blingy than what I like. That's what I felt. So I never bought it, so mine it now. And I'm just taking this old eyeshadow brush. I kind of prefer cream highlighters. I feel like I can control them a little bit more because when you use a powder, when I use a powder, I like to really blend, blend, blend. It polishes the pearls. But the more you blend, the wider the scope of where it gets on your face, if that makes sense. And there it is. So the word golden is in here, but this has both silver and gold in it. So it's kind of balanced, or maybe it depends on the light. What you're going to see might be better on this side because of the light. So I'm really just buffing in that one area, not moving too much. And just polish it and then with my fingers go around the edges and now let's just do a little bit on the nose because maybe that will give you a better idea of what it is and do a little right here you know what whatever I have left let's just put it right here why not so there's cheeks now for finishing powder, I, I don't remember if she said this. I think she did talk about this. I got two things. One, I finally got this brush. Now this is the smaller one. The larger one was sold out, but I think this will be fine. And she has long said that this is a great buffing brush for your finishing powder, especially this finishing powder, the Guerlain Meteorites, which I've had for a long, long time. They smell like violets. I can't stand it. I love it. Yum. I don't happen to love this color on me, so I don't use it. And you can tell what the color is after you've had it for a while. The little the foamy thing in here is pink, and I don't really want to emphasize pink on my face. Uh, but these are what the pearls look like. You put the lid on and shake them up after you remove that foam. And then you pick up your powder from the lid. And then you pounce. She said she only does it on the lower area of her face and buff. And she said it makes your skin look like it's alabaster or marble. I actually kind of like this whole technique, but I'm going to do it on the forehead too because that is the flattest area on my face, really. And why not? And also, this will help any edges that I have going on from the bronzer. I'm really glad that I have this brush now. And I do feel like, I like the finish that I'm getting with this. I think it's lovely. So for me, the brush, I'm really glad that I got it and I will be keeping it. 
and the Guerlain meteorites I've already had. Now for lips, she loves the liners from Natasha Denona. She, I think she might have all of them. I just have one, which needs to be sharpened. I'm not exactly sure where the camera stopped. I was doing my whole lip liner spiel, and there it is. Now for lip products, she mentioned the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss, and what she said about it made me want to buy it. She's mentioned it many times, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna get it. It was sold out everywhere to the point where I was wondering, are they discontinuing it? I still want to get it. So my other choices were the Chantecaille, the Lip Veil. I find the lip sheet to be just a sin against me. <laughs> For a lip product to be both shiny and drying really takes a special talent. The Giorgio Armani did one recently in the past year and a half, and Michelle loved those. And they're long-lasting shine lipsticks, and they suck the life out of my lips. I'm telling you. Same thing with the Lip Chic. I just don't like Chantecaille lip products. I haven't tried the Lip Veil. I don't want to try the Lip Veil. I'm done with Chantecaille lip products. I got the Sicily Lip Twist, in the color that she really likes, and everything will be linked down below. And it's very, very close to my lip color. So the top is just the liner and my lip, and I didn't bring the liner down at all. It's only lining, and then the bottom is the liner and this. And some might ask, well, why do you want something that close to your lips? Just, you know, wear your lips. <laughs> you already have them. But I find that when you are doing your makeup and you have like a full face of makeup on and you think, I like my lip color with this look, so I'm going to keep it, you look unfinished. Or you look like you put on lipstick and it came off hours ago. I don't know how to explain it. That's when you go with a color that is very, very similar to your lip color but it makes you look like you finished doing your makeup, if that makes any sense at all. I really hope that you made it to the end of this video because I think I was kind of tense in the beginning and probably wasn't smiling that much and now I'm feeling like, oh yeah, here comes my humor. So let's go over it, you guys. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, I think it's fine. I think it works really well with this. I don't use bases, I don't use primers because I don't really need them. Foundation stays on my face until I take it off. It may not look great, but I, it doesn't break up. It doesn't, it's, it's not like, oh, my nose is gone, my chin is gone. It's more like, well, if I was leaning, it's gone. If I went for a hike and I got a little sweaty and I wiped my face, even then it's still on. So I don't really need a, a base and I already moisturize and I already do my sunscreen. So I'm not really sure why somebody needs that because I don't know that it says it's for longevity, but it's lovely. It's just not for me. The Kogendo Natural Lighting Powder. The other powder that she liked is the Sicily Paris Compact, but you know, I already had the Kogendo. I think it works actually very nicely with this color, with this foundation, with the Surat, um, but it does have teeny little pieces, very random, not a lot of glitter, and it does impart a little bit of color, I feel. I mean, it's not translucent, but it's fine. The Bobbi Brown bronzers, I think they're lovely. It's the only one that she mentioned. I'm not a huge, huge bronzing person, and I feel like Bobbi Brown, at least the one that I have, is better for me in the summer because I can mix that pink and it looks like I got color from being in the sun as opposed to a color that is bronzing me. A little bronzer, a little contour. The Kira Weiss blush creams. I have several of them but I really want to try the Lancome because she talks about it so much and I really don't know what the hell color this is. But you can see, or I can see right now, it does have a sheen to it, and it is one of those shape shifter colors. Is it warm? Is it cool? I don't know. It's called Honey Glaze, so it makes me think it's warm. And I swear, yesterday I was swatching it and comparing it to the blushes I did for Alana's video, and I'm like, yeah, this is warm, but it's also cool. 
it's just, it's too much for my poor little Virgo brain to wrap my head around. But I think it's probably a good color to just have in your repertoire. For highlighters, she mentioned the Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Sticks in Nectar and Petal, and I adore Nectar. I think it is so beautiful, precious, so beautiful. But I have those, so I decided to get the Clay de Poe, and I'm undecided, again, because of the light. It might be a little too silvery for me, um, but it is beautiful. I'm just not sure. And it's weird because it's called Golden Lights, so I would think it would be a little gold for me. So for me, the jury is out. I, d I just need to put this on when the sun is out and see what real color that it is to see if it will work for me. But it is absolutely beautiful. It is a little bit stronger than the previous highlighters that they did, which I thought were very, very subtle, and I, I kind of like that. But you see how I just tried to put it on right here? And it migrated a little bit, I think. That could be the blush. As long as it doesn't migrate too much, I think it's workable for me. But I just have to use a very little bit. The Tom Ford Brow Gel. I feel like this is really, really, really too dark for me in the Espresso. And I can see little chunks. I think it's a little bit of a learning curve. Let me know. But... I don't mind the look. I'm going to pull you in a little bit. It is 100% a lot more time than what I usually do. I usually go in with that NYX pencil. And this is something you have to be careful with or you're going to get it on your face. And it's hard to take off. And you'll get like a gloop or a gloop. And it feels like it's a lot of work. But I think it's, it's good. I absolutely do. The Wayne Goss Mascara more than anything it's not a look i hate what i hate is how hard it is to take off so not for me uh, the eyeliner of course i love that eyeliner the the concealer which i don't think she mentioned in the video because it's not in my notes still undecided i'm not sure about the color i like it a lot better today than i did with that givenchy powder that i did in another video, which you may or may not have seen. And then Natasha Denona lip liners. I think the consistency is kind of ideal. Especially as you get older, you don't want something that is too hard and too waxy, but you also do not want something that is too loose because it will go up into your little lines and they're, they're, they're more like a lipstick with a really thin wand as opposed to a lip liner. And I think the consistency with these are absolutely perfect, especially for older women who, it can be hard for us. It's hard for me. <laughs> and this is comfortable and it's a beautiful color and I like it a lot. And I think that's it, you guys. Oh, this Sonia G brush, really glad I got that. And the Guerlain powder I already did have, but I kind of want a different color because I don't like pink. And I think that is it. You guys, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me. I feel like it might have been a little bit spacey. <laughs> what else is new? And I hope you learned something. I hope you got some good ideas. Check my box down below for links to all these items should you be interested in purchasing or seeing what they look like. And until we meet again, I'm wishing you good health.